This episode of the Dungeon Cast is brought to you by the Elements of Inspiration Kickstarter. Set off for adventure with Elements of Inspiration. This 420 card box set contains nine decks, each for a different environment. So no matter where the heroes go, there will be exciting events to experience. Decks within the Element of Inspiration box set are based on common and exotic environments found in fantasy adventures including urban, forest, mountains, underground, waterways, tundra, deserts, plains, and swamps. The card types are based on the three pillars of gameplay emphasized in the world's greatest role-playing game, exploration, role-play, and combat. Each card has a keyword and an explanatory paragraph to spark your imagination. There are also four options listed that pertain to the keyword for added variety and inspiration. Do not hesitate. Adventure calls. Back elements of inspiration from Nord Games today on Kickstarter with the link in the description below. Interested in sponsoring the show? Reach out to us at thedungeoncast at gmail.com. Hey everyone, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Will. I'm Brian. This is a podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons. And today we are talking about Emerald Dragons. Hey Brian. Hey Will. How you doing today? I'm so stoked for Dragons. Yes, me too. How are Um, you? I'm doing good. Yeah, 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 it's you a good are. day. It's, it's, a good, it's a great day to be doing the best Dungeons and Dragons podcast that was ever been made. Yes, which on, we were just on the talking face of the earth. Undisputedly, best podcast. Yeah, there are related to D and D. There are fantasy. We might be the best podcast ever, but we're definitely the best D and D podcast. Yeah, tell your friends. Tell your friends. Um, so we're back at it again, <laughs> examining gem dragons one gem type at a time. Damn, Daniel. And today it's the gem dragon that represents my favorite color, emerald dragons. So not green, but emerald. Emerald green is my favorite color. Yeah. So specifically emerald. Yes. Okay, I yes. didn't know that. It's yes. a fun Absolutely. fact. I did know Will's favorite color, but only sort of. <laughs> right. <laughs> emerald dragons are a breed of gem dragon known to be inquisitive and often more knowledgeable than most sages. <clears throat> Cunning, curious, and extremely adept in magic, both arcane and psionic, emerald dragons fill a very similar niche to their chromatic counterpart, the green dragon. Though I would imagine that emerald dragons would absolutely despise greens, emeralds are cautious, neutral, and in a lot of ways paranoid of other beings. Greens are ambitious, deceptive, and power hungry, not an emerald demo in any way, shape, or form. Mm. So, <clears throat> when first born, emerald dragons have translucent sea green scales. As they grow older, their scales harden and develop into richer and more varied shades of green, with everything from a minty hue to a deep emerald. These scales scintillate in any light, and owing to the wide range, oh, and this is owing to the wide range of shades. Uh, these constant ripples as a dragon, these constantly ripple as the dragon moves, causing its height to appear to be constantly shifting. That's cool. Um, That's it, really, really it, cool. It's pretty cool. The pupils of their eyes, on the other hand, fade with age until eventually at the age of a great worm, if they get that far, their eyes are simply blank green glowing orbs. Oh, wow. Okay. It's pretty common amongst hmm. amongst dragons. They lose their pupils. I don't know what that signifies, but they do. But they can still see? Yeah, they're, they're fine. They got the fucking... Byaku- if anything, they got true sight and blind sight by the time they're great worms. So. They got the fucking Byakugan, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> In comparison to other dragons, emeralds have long and sinewy limbs, tails, and necks. The average adult typically has a body length between 45 to 54 feet and a tail between 35 to 42 feet. And the biggest great worms grow up to 108 feet long in the bodies with tails up to 84 feet long. That's a total of... 196 fucking feet long. That's so big. It's so long. That's a lot of that's a lot of long. That's a lot of length. Um the dragon's <laughs> horns and spines hover above the body moving and shifting along uh the back and tail to mirror the dragon's mood. This seems to be a trait shared by all gem dragons. Wow. The whole the whole like yeah, their horns float, and spines are floating, floating around shit. the body. Yeah. yeah. Cuz psychic, right? Cuz psychic, right? Cuz psychic. In case you didn't know, psychic. Cuz psychic. If you didn't uh listen to our episode covering like all the gem dragons in like a kind of more of a distilled form. Yeah, in general um, sense. you can go check that out if you want just like an overview if you don't know anything about these ones. Pause this one, go watch that one, come back watch this one, then tell everybody you know about it. Sure. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Emerald dragons are the most curious, cunning, and manipulative of the gem dragons, wielding psionic power to weave illusions, to deceive, and disorient. Their deeply inquisitive nature tends toward a keen interest in customs and history of other species. They often exceed even the greatest scholars for knowledge in this particular field of study. Um, they love to observe local settlements and peoples, uh, using their psionic abilities to cloak themselves and watch from afar. When an emerald dragon is old enough, the dragon might take on the guise of a creature that can blend in with the local population, or at least get close without arousing suspicion. Once in a position to observe, the dragon studies the day-to-day life of local folk with a keen interest in any magical phenomenon. That's cool. So they're just looking for, like, 
some sorcerer kid that doesn't know about himself yet to like fucking pop a fireball on accident or whatever. No, it's more like um, number one, they are inherently interested in like the customs of people, right? Like sure. why do people do the things they do? Like the uh, like anthropology in general, they're super into. Um, but also, they have a certain fascination with like supernatural and arcane phenomena, like. Yeah, I figured it would be something that happened while they are studying the town, the yeah, townsfolk. Like, they like, don't oh, necessarily, this, they're not the interested in the kid that accidentally fireball. excuse me, they're more interested in the fact that, like, fireball spells seem to magically dissipate in the forest near this town and don't work. Uh, okay, you know I see, I mean? like, yeah. something out of the ordinary, yeah. even by, like, a standard of magic. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Okay. So, despite their natural curiosity and fascination with other peoples, emerald dragons are the shyest of the gem dragons. Now, this is not to be confused with the more aggressive and territorial antisocial behavior of the sapphire dragons, which we talked about recently, mm-hmm. uh, tend to be both paranoid and distrustful of visitors. Emerald dragons are reclusive as a rule, generally going out of their way to avoid interacting with other intelligent creatures. Um, and they do not abide anyone coming within close proximity of their layers or hordes. Yeah, like, that tracks. Extremely introverted private people. Oh, yeah, because sapphire dragon will, like, tour someone through their horde. Um... Did I say that? I don't well, remember. Well, not them. like maybe not voluntarily, but Sapphire like the, Dragons are really territorial. It's like if you cross the line, I'm gonna eat you. Yes, but we did cover some lore in there that was like, well, let me show you. Oh, some I shit think it's here. if you start like uh, conversing with them about like the strategy and the war and start recognizing the bullshit. Yeah, like, like a like, brass almost or a like copper. A, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, the extreme introversion, uh, this extreme introversion, makes it very difficult to make even a casual acquaintance with an emerald dragon, let alone learn what they know, which is probably why you've sought them out in the first place, because they're so damn smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, an emerald dragon's interest in history and culture occasionally can get the better of them, prompting them to seek some engagement with the folk of the world. You know, I mean, they're out there. Oh, like the only mingling. way to know more is to talk to someone. I got to get in there. Yeah. I got to pretend to be Bob and, <laughs> and, and talk to Bob's family. Oh, geez. So yeah. I got to... <laughs> I got to impersonate. Maybe not that. Maybe not that, actually. I got to pretend to be Bob's long lost cousin, long lost cousin, and then talk to Bob. I got to kidnap Bob Ross and then <laughs> put him in a, put him, put him in my cave and then go be Bob and talk to Mrs. Ross about <laughs> these muffins that she's doing. I can smell them, but I can't taste them. I got to get in there. I have to know. <laughs> hey, sure. is it flour? What is it? Nutmeg? Is it almond flour? What kind of flour are you using? All purpose? Okay. Okay. Nutmeg? Yeah, I see. I smelled it. I smelled it. What else? Something mm-hmm. here I don't recognize from those. Can I have a bite? Definitely an emerald dragon. Absolutely. Please, missus, make some muffins for me. I must know. <laughs> I mean, it was so good yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Let's make some more. <laughs> However, an emerald dragon's interest in history and culture. Oh, no. I already read that goddamn one. Uh, goddamn dude, right. get on emerald it. Emerald dragons prize <laughs> knowledge. Uh, particularly local histories and focus on magical events and individuals. Uh, they usually know of places of power near their layers and keep detailed records of how phenomena connected to these sites react to outside influences. Okay. They also prize cultural artifacts, especially relics with historical significance. They place great importance on an item's origin, which can make it difficult to gauge uh, what they might actually value. Uh, in, in any particular object, so like oh, like where maybe they value where it's from more more than the so than the itself. object itself. So okay, okay. yeah, despite being unmoved by the loss of a golden scepter deemed to be a mere replica, an animal dragon might become enraged at the theft of a clay mug known to have been used by a legendary dwarf warlord while on campaign. Oh shit! Okay, so. that's another weird little like uh, item quirk about these dragons. I noticed with the sapphire dragon had one that was like. I'm concerned with this set of items that's from this particular battle and not right. really what the individual item's worth is. It seems to be an ongoing theme with the it, gems. It's worth sure. is tied to a, a historical event. To an, an ideal of yeah. mine. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. Or a particular interest. Um, we'll find out as we go through more of the gem dragons if that holds true. Right. Uh, emerald dragons also tend to avidly collect magic items and spells that are related to or create illusions, allowing them to better conceal their treasures and themselves from prying eyes and divinations. Yeah, a popular one is the Staff of Illusion, right? And can pop off a major illusion spell. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And emerald dragons are unusual among gem dragons and their preference for coinage over gemstones when amassing treasure. They are fascinated by the various designs of coinage and often strive to collect rare mintages. Um, most emerald dragons can precisely enumerate the names, amounts, and denominations of every bit of currency in their horde. 
Oh, it was Utah, two thousand five. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. They definitely okay. It's good they, shit. I don't know if you had this when you were a kid, but yes, my parents the book, the book, the yeah. book. With a the lot of people had all the, book the with states. The yeah, never completed that shit. Super hype. Everyone yeah. was hype about that. The, yeah. the minting. They were hype for like one year. Unfortunately, the the whole minting process took about ten. So. I mean, they were hype. Well, when it, when you say that, I mean, like, there have been coin collectors throughout the ages. Sure, but like this is very particular when they were coming out with the state ones. This was pop culture this for a like while, like instead of niche coin collector this, culture. What was this? Like 1999 to 2003, there was hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I never so, finished Somewhere mine. in there, for sure. But you had it too. Yeah, we had the book. We got through the, like half of I it. I think I got like 10 states and then I give up. I need these quarters for the ice cream, man. It's so true. I, He's I, out I, there now. I rated it for the ice cream, man. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. That's exactly what I did. I need my strawberry shortcake cream bar, damn it. That's a good one, dude. That's oh, a yeah. good choice. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, back to my, Emerald Dragon. No, I want my Ninja Turtle pop to I, look like... I was never into those. To look no, like I got smashed by a case of books. <laughs> With the stupid bubblegum eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. All right. <laughs> Emerald dragons attended to unusual events makes them particularly useful to their sapphire dragon cousins who hunt down aberrations and seek evidence of far roam incursions into the material plane. Oh. Emerald dragons are in fact the only quote unquote outsiders a sapphire will tolerate or even go as far to invite uh, to layer within their territory. In such cases, these gem dragons will work together with emerald dragons, tracking the source of an incursion while sapphire dragons plan and execute a decisive purge or recruit agents to do it for them. I see. That's so, interesting. Yeah. It is. Unlike, <laughs> <laughs> unlike most other dragons we've talked about on the show, emerald dragons are especially attentive and protective as parents. Uh, they take the care of their young to heart and usually wish them to stay in their layers with them for as long as possible so that they can protect one another. Okay, that's sweet. Yeah. So they're huge assholes until they have kids. They're, they're not really assholes. They're just private. They're not out hurting people or doing nefarious things or just gathering knowledge and wanting people to leave them alone. I don't know. Kidnapping Bob Ross is pretty nefarious. <laughs> All right. Short rest time. Okay. <laughs> Joe and Margaret from Arrow Road Creations are longtime fans of the Dungeon Cast and are excited to sponsor an episode. Arrow Road Creations is a literal mom and pop D&D shop specializing in all things D&D, ranging from unique sets of dice to scattered terrain to one of a kind D&D accessories. It doesn't matter whether you're a DM or a player because there's something for you. Right now, Dungeon Cast fans can enjoy an extra 10% off their order by using the coupon code DungeonCast at checkout. Be sure to check out their scroll theme spell tracker, perfect for any caster. The Dungeon Cast and Arrow Road Creations are teaming up to do a handful of awesome giveaways. Be sure to check out social media to find out more. You ready? We've, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've returned. Indeed, we have. We're back. Indeed, and we're we talking are. about Emerald Dragons, Indeed. but before that. We should talk about something else. What? Patreon. Go support us there. It helps. Please do. It really does. A bunch. Patreon.com slash the Dungeon Cast. All right. Let's get back to Emerald Dragons. Yeah. So, Emerald Dragons have a pretty particular taste in the location of their lairs. Uh, they prefer to live underground, making their lairs in caves and subterranean ruins, uh, favoring specifically locations that have been abandoned and ideally forgotten by other creatures. They also are most comfortable in extreme heat, so they frequently try to choose their lair sites inside of volcanoes or near geothermal vents. And although emerald dragons are reclusive, they prefer to dwell in areas close to some sort of civilization and and are people of any race. Uh, though, of course, not where they are likely to make their presence known. So they want it to be underground, preferably in ruins where people used to live but have now forgotten about. Uh, preferably in a volcano and also preferably near people but not too near people. It's very, very yeah. specific. Yeah. Like I take a nice hike to people. Yes, maybe. exactly. So the, really... Uh, a, a mountain town at the foot of a volcano and then pick a cave up there that a cyclops lived in once or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like super, that's creme de la creme. That's man. that, that's yeah. that good, good. Absolutely. So over time, an emerald dragon's psychic presence seeps into the land surrounding their lairs, expanding their awareness and subconsciously luring their favorite food, giant lizards, to settle and thrive in the region. Now the sapphire dragon had this too. Spiders. Spiders. Yeah. Like that's so cool. Like you're just so psychic, you, your food comes to you. Like, I wish I could just, like, settle in and just know pizza's going to be around. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? That's fucking cool. <laughs> and you just have to like, you better pick something fucking that's not pizza though, because if it's just showing up and you're gonna be eating a lot of pizza, well, yeah, you're metabolism like a dragon though. Yeah, exactah. exactly. Yeah, so eat I'm a fucking emerald want. dragon. What do I? Get? I'll eat all the pizza I want. I'm gonna eat all this lizard pizza. Okay, <laughs> hot uh, lizards in my body. Have you ever eaten uh, alligator? Uh, no. It's really good. I've had okay. deep fried alligator. Well, you deep said fri- lizard, yeah. Lizard, alligator. They're ro- they're both reptiles. They're both reptiles. <laughs> okay. Have you ever eaten turtle? I haven't. I've heard turtle soup's good though. I never eaten turtle, okay. so like, okay. I don't know. I'm just wondering if you have. They're no, both reptiles. I would. I'm very interested in eating things reptiles. that aren't normally well, sure, reptiles, <laughs> but anything that's like like I've had ostrich burger, I've had elk burgers, I've had boar burgers. They're all good. I did have a um, a bison bison stuff. Oh, I've, I've had, had a bison one too. Yeah, I've yeah, had yeah. oxtail. I haven't had um, that. That sounds cool. I've had shaved foie gras, which was like that's a what is that? That's duck. Oh, and it's, yeah, yeah. It's very suspect because they force feed the duck like cornmeal Ooh. until it gets like. Okay, why do we got to be weird about it? Fuck. I, that's how you make foie gras, I guess. Okay. But I tried right. it because it's like a super delicacy and like I felt bad about it. So Did it taste good? Oh, yeah, it was oh, great. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, for sure. I'm not going to do it. And then, I've like, had quail before and okay. that was interesting. I've heard quail eggs are very good. I've never had those. Hmm. Yeah. Back to Emerald Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we, how do we, what? Yeah. Okay. An Emerald Dragons layer is a maze of twisting tunnels, interconnected, interconnected caverns, and crumbling ruins designed to disorient disorient intruders. Okay. Circuitous routes within the layer provide the dragon with numerous ways to evade pursuit, while strategically designed choke points allow them to harry enemies with repeated ambushes. Yeah, all right. That's dope. Uh, just like, um, like, it feels like they grab... Like writers from Wizards grab like a magnet off the wall of like suggestions for monster layers. Sure, and, like they always grab this one. Like oh, the 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 ambushes and the layer is maze. Like okay, but, I mean, because why wouldn't it be? Why like, wouldn't it? It's when you're true. a dragon, like you got the time and you have got a horde to protect, and you're strong, and you're strong. You dig? Yeah. Emerald dragons frequently lay traps and alarms at the entrance points to their layers with older and more paranoid dragons employing several layers of such defenses. Mm. Um, Emerald dragons use the natural features of their layers to confuse and imperil intruders, setting traps leading to yawning chasms or pools of flows of lava. That's dope. (laughs) They take great pains to hide the chambers that house their hordes and collected lore, often using illusion magic and subtle construction around the natural features of their layers to conceal their central horde chambers from mundane and magical sight. It's the Winchester house, but inside a volcano. Yeah. yeah, Just open a door and fall into a pit of lava. Yep, exactly. If after the traps, alarms, and illusions, uh, intruders are still not discouraged, the Emerald Dragon hides itself or turns itself invisible and uses its powers to spy on the trespassers. It remains hidden and reveals itself only if the trespassers discover it, its horde, or worst of all, its hatchlings. Mm. Uh, finally, if outnumbered or outmatched, the Emerald Dragon retreats and begins uh, plotting its revenge, which can take years to play out. Oh, wow. Can you imagine getting run up on and you're an Emerald Dragon? You have to bounce. You have I to know. dip from your home. That's a big threat. What yeah. rolled up on you? I mean, probably another dragon. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Almost definitely another like dragon. Like a red? That or a, red a party of emerald? five dickheads decided that your treasure is <laughs> theirs. <laughs> it's one of those things. One of them, the, and one of them tried to have sex with you, <laughs> and you're like, no? <laughs> "No, please get out of my house." And they're like, "But I rolled a nat 20. and I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> no." <laughs> so, funnily enough, Emerald Dragon's preference for volcanic layers can unintuitively force them to interact with people. This territorial preference often puts them in conflict with fire giants. Despite their reluctance to reveal themselves to strangers, Emerald Dragons might approach experienced adventurers in the hopes of pitting them against the fire giant rivals. Oh, cool. That's yeah. neat. We're gonna have there's you take care there's of it. your hook right there. You want to have sex with me? <laughs> you really want to, huh? I got a job for you. I got a price. <laughs> um, in older editions of D&D, Emerald Dragons, rather than having a magical breath attack, could instead make a loud keening wail. The, the sonic vibration was powerful enough to cause pain and injury. To those who could not evade or resist and leave them deafened and disoriented and possibly even stunned. Jeez, what a nightmare. And now the Emerald Dragon has a psionic breath attack called Disoriented Breath, which does sonic damage as well as disabling effect to the target's next d20 roll. Wow. Mm hmm. Neat. Uh, like any dragon, Emerald Dragons gain an array of magical powers as they age, though accounts of these vary, i.e. vary by edition. We've talked about this many times in the show. Yes. Everything changes every edition, but nothing it all stays the same at the same time. <laughs> uh, most of these powers can be narrowed down to vast, vast casting knowledge, uh, though, and I would recommend to anyone running an Emerald Dragon to consider expanding the innate spell list the current Emerald Dragon stat block already has 
to something a bit more expansive. I, I would just because I feel flavor wise it would. Yeah, fit. I mean, like you could put whatever you want on that thing and justify it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's a dragon, it's, super smart. It's a super smart dragon that specializes in magic. It should probably have more magic than. Well, you, you could be the judge. We're gonna read the stat blocks and you can tell me if you agree. I like or the not. idea of like psychicking a spell out of someone's head. You know what I mean? Ooh, yeah, I like that it's too. Neat. Before we get into the stat block, let's talk about a named Faerunian Emerald Dragon. Ralathim. Ralathim? Yeah, it's Ralathim. 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 Ralathim is an ancient Emerald Dragon who dwells in an extinct volcano known as the Pit of Stars on the northernmost isle of Rothim off the sword coast of Faerun. Though most Emerald Dragons are paranoid by nature, Ralathim became a special zoo ever after having witnessed the arrival of planar travelers in Faerun. Fearing that an invasion of the, his world by interplanar armies was inevitable, he has spent the past century collecting magic items that he hopes will enable him to survive the coming conflict. He is the ancient one from Loki, <laughs> the show. Spoilers oh, for Loki. So, yeah, I haven't finished that one, so I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, he's a uh, King the Con- King the Conqueror oh, okay. from Marvel. Okay, for sure. Which has been out for a long time, which I've been told over and over again is okay to spoil. When okay, it's been out fine, forever. sure, yeah, yeah. You get spoiled than me. I don't get scared of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Roth- Rolathim's, I keep wanting to say Rothalim, but it's Rolathim. Uh, his drive to amass magic and his innate mistrust of anyone powerful enough to potentially threaten him makes the dragon a dangerous adversary. However, he knows the surest way of safeguarding Faerun against planar invaders is to keep a careful watch on all planar portals, and that to do so, he must rely on allies. So Ralathim is therefore open to negotiating with adventurers willing to aid in that task, but only those that he is sure he can trust. More than one occasion, doubt has gnawed at Ralathim's mind, prompting him to preemptively strike against a previously trusted ally. So he's crazy. He's a crazy person. Yeah, it sounds like emerald dragons kind of scale at like low, high tier for a monster. So they can like, I can oh, deal yeah, with a strong. lot of shit, but not with that. I need help. Right. I mean, they. Uh, that's about where green dragons are. Yeah, 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 you're right. Okay. So any questions about emeralds before you pull up the stat block and we talk about it? I like Rolotham. It gave some personality to Yeah, to yeah. It. I gave you cool. an example of what emerald dragon could be like. I'm ready for the stat block. Tell me all about it. But first. But first. Fizban. Fizban. Did it come up in the notes? Um, I never mentioned it, no. Why not? I don't know. I just didn't. Do it for me. This All this lore comes from Fizban. Fizban! Except for the lore that doesn't, because it comes from previous editions. Not Fizban. <laughs> uh, okay, I got a quote from Fizban. Have you ever heard an emerald dragon purr? It sounds like a tremendous, lethal, and adorable earthquake. Hmm. Interesting. That was a quote from Fizban. Yeah. Oh, and now I'll go to the stat block. <laughs> uh, do a little bit of scroll in here. Scrolly scroll. And right. now... Ancient Emerald Dragon. We got the Ancient Emerald Dragon stat block here. It didn't go away when I zoomed in like last episode. That's good. Uh, all right. So we got a gargantuan dragon made of gem, typically lawful neutral. Uh, it says typically, which means there's room for play, which there always is mm-hmm. when you <laughs> are playing a game. Or other Call, things. Or whatever. Yeah. It's got a natural armor of 20. It's got 332 HP or 19 D20 plus 133. I did see a lot of people in our comment section on YouTube say that they roll. I, I don't mean a lot. I mean, I saw a few comments saying people roll out their monster HP, mm. which is cool. Give it that random, like, you know, you never know how much HP a monster might have. Right. So metagamers, right? right? We got a speed of 40 feet, burrow speed of 30 feet, and a fly speed of 80. Only which thing you can't do is swim. Oh, it can't swim. Yeah, that dog don't hunt. Uh <laughs> Strength is 25. Dex is 12. Pretty low. Uh, Con, 25. Because it's so strong. It doesn't need to be fast. I'm surprised how strong it is because they're rather lithe looking. You should pull up an image of one. They're rather lithe looking. Yes, there's uh, some up here. Oh, there we go. They're kind of sinewy. Sinewy, lean. Yeah. Um, And smart. But also buff as fuck. Buff. Uh, Yeah. Full package. Let's go. (laughs) No, they're not the full package. Because they're, they're slow. They're dexterously low. Okay. And they're not as wise. They're pretty wise. Okay. 25 con, uh, 20 intelligence, 18 wisdom, and 20 charisma. As a matter of fact, they're, they're stronger than they are smart, and they're famous for their smarts. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the smarts at a plus five. That's like and the plus, super yeah, genius absolutely. level intelligence. They're, yeah, absolutely. B- b- quite strong. Yeah. Yeah. Saving throws are plus eight to dex. Uh, plus 14 to con, just because, and then plus 11 to wisdom and plus 12 to charisma. So they're good at saves. Mm-hmm. Um, they get a plus 12 to arcana, plus 12 to deception, plus 18 to perception, and a plus 8 to stealth. So stealthy enough, even with the low decks. Yeah. 
Um, it's plus something. Eight, plus eight's pretty good. They resist fire and psychic. Uh, they have blind sight of 60 feet, dark vision of 120 feet, and a passive perception of 28. They speak common, draconic, and telepathy, which this <laughs> telepathy transcends most language. I think all language, typically. Yes, uh, typically. At yes. 120 feet of range. Um, their challenge rating is 21. They issue 33,000 experience points. It just comes right out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, they got a proficiency bonus of plus seven. Uh, you're going to get the three legendary resistance, resistance. If the dragon fails a saving throw, it can choose to succeed. Uh, Tunneler, the dragon can burrow through solid rock at half its burrowing speed and can leave a 20-foot <clears throat> diameter tunnel in its wake. You know what? It, did the sapphire dragon get this? I'm looking this up. Yeah, I feel like it, it did. It, it super digs. No wonder they're friends. It like, digs. Like, at, hey, you're um, like me, but green. I remember it digging at a rate uh, which shocked me. Because um, <laughs> this one burrows at 30. I think sapphire burrowed at 60 or even 80. I, I don't remember oh, exactly, on, but I think on, Will's on. pulling it up. I am I'll continue to, to read. Um, 20 foot diameter in its wake, unless it hits a, a stone that is harder than emerald, right? Haha, <laughs> get it? Sure. Uh, warp perception. <laughs> Once per day, the dragon can cast Mirage Arcane, which um, that's pretty long, pretty long <laughs> description there on that spell. Uh, but they can, they can do that. Um, oh, shoot, I lost it. Nope, got it back. Nope. Wait, adult emerald dragon. No, no, I'm back. I'm back. The dragon cast Mirage Arcane, requiring no spell components and using intelligence as a spell casting ability. And then we got a multi attack. Uh, the dragon makes one bite attack and two claw attacks. The bite does a plus 14 to hit, reach of 15 feet uh, on one target. And it's going to deal 18 or 2d10 plus 7 piercing damage plus 10 or 3d6 psychic damage. That's pretty cool. Could do 28. <clears throat> combo damage and then the claw so bite attack and two claws so you do two claws plus 14 to hit reach of 10 feet on one target it's going to do 14 or 2d6 plus 7 slashing damage did you find it i did find it sapphire dragons do have tunneler and they also have spider climb what was the distance for uh underground movement underground movement should be closer um, to the top let me see here keep going burrow was 40 feet 40. Okay. Yeah. I, for some reason, I thought so. It's 10 feet less for the sapphire. So it is more, but not as much as I thought. What was the challenge rating on your emerald over there? Uh, challenge rating is 21. Oh, Jesus, these pop up windows. Yeah, it's are 21. 21. Versus 21. Sapphire is 22. Okay. Cool. Okay. So <clears> continuing <throat> on, we have the uh, disorienting breath. Uh, it's going to recharge on a five or a six on a roll for a mm -hmm. d6. The dragon exhales a wave of psychic dissonance in a 90 foot cone. Each creature that in that area must make a DC 22 intelligence saving throw. On a failed save, the creature takes 56 or 16 D6 psychic damage. And until the end of its next turn, when the creature makes an attack or an ability check, it must roll a D8 and reduce the total by the number rolled. Wow. Yep. That's pretty uncommon to see that. Yeah, uh, it is. I like it, though. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage with no additional effects. So if you save it, you don't have to deal with that D8 uh, neg on your rolls. Um, we got spell casting, psionics. The dragon casts one of the following spells requiring no spell components and using intelligence as the spell casting ability. Uh, spell save DC is going to be at a 20. That's very high. Uh, it can at will mage hand, which is very common, does 10 pounds of pressure, makes a fucking hand that moves like 30 feet. And then it can make minor illusions. Uh, once a day, it can detect thoughts, dispel magic. It can cast etherealness major image and mislead so all stuff pretty much you know dispel magic etherealness that's i'm not familiar with that one i think it's, it's they kind of seventh become level spell incorporeal you step into the border uh the border regions of the ethereal plane in the area where it overlaps with your current plane you remain in the border uh ethereal for the duration or until you use your action to dismiss the spell <clears throat> during this time you can move in any direction if you move up or down, every foot of movement costs an extra foot. You can see or and hear the plane you originated from, but everything there looks gray, and you can't see anything more than 60 feet away. While on the ethereal plane... Oh, shoot. I just went out of it. Yeah, while on the ethereal plane, you can only affect and be affected by other creatures on that plane. Creatures that aren't on the ethereal plane can't perceive you and can't interact with you unless a special ability or magic has given them the ability to do so. You ignore all objects and effects that aren't on the ethereal plane, allowing you to move objects you perceive on that plane you originated from. 
So you can pretty much just like travel through walls. You become a shit. ghost. Yeah. A temporary ghost. That's how the ethereal plane kind of works. Um, mm-hmm. Should I read this Mirage Arcane spell, Will? It's also a seventh level spell that it if can do you want to. perception. If you want to. Um, this one, you make a terrain in an area up to one mile square look. Uh, sam- uh, into one one mile square, look, sound, smell, and even feel like some other sort of terrain. The terrain's general shape remains the same, however. Uh, open fields and a road could be made to resemble swamp, hill, crevasse, or some other difficult or impassable terrain. A pond can be made to seem like a grassy meadow. Uh, precipice like a gentle slope or a rock-strewn gully like a wide and smooth road. <clears throat> or, you know, like a uh, death lava pit into like a nice smooth tunnel that your party just walks right into secret tunnel similarly you can alter the appearance of structures or add them where none are present the spell doesn't disguise conceal or add creatures the illusion includes audible visual tactile and uh olfactory elements so it can turn clear ground into difficult terrain or vice versa or otherwise impede movement through an area any piece of the illusory terrain, such as rock or a stick, is removed from the spell's area. Is removed from the spell's area, disappears immediately. Um, so it's a big super mirage. Creatures with true sight can see through it. Uh, the illusions to the terrain's true form. However, uh, all other elements of the illusion remain. So while the creature is aware of the illusion's presence, the creature can still physically interact with the so illusion. So if you use it to disguise a lava pit does the ground that is part of the illusion actually hold the weight of the people walking on it like it's tactile but is it like you know does it hold them i don't i feel like no you make because this is an illusion right, right. you make uh, but it says look you can sound smell and even feel like so, so yeah i guess so it feels like it but like it, it, so would it feel like you're on the ground as you're actually falling and you just don't realize it i don't i don't know it's interesting. Um, I mean, you can add structures where none are present. Appear- appearance of structures or add them where none are present. Um, the spell doesn't disguise, conceal, or add creatures. Okay. It's an illusion. I, I think you could just like trick, you trap just people into it. falling into bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I would imagine so. Uh, they can do that once per day. Yep. Oh, but they do. They can make a an area that's difficult terrain, not difficult terrain. So maybe, I don't know. Let us know in the comments how that works because we're, we're a little confused just reading the spell right off the bat. And we're doing a podcast, so we can't just like go dive into the research of warp <laughs> perception right. uh, and Mirage Arcane right away. It's pretty high-level magic. We don't cast that at the table very much. Uh, bonus action, change shape. The dragon magically transforms into any creature that is medium or small while retaining its game statistics other than its size. The transformation ends if the dragon is reduced to zero hit points or uses a bonus action to end it. I wonder why they just didn't call it like polymer. Uh, Polymorph? I almost said polymerization. I'm playing a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> uh, psychic step. The dragon magically teleports to an unoccupied space it can see within 60 feet of it. And then legendary actions. It can take three of these a day. Or, I'm sorry, it can take three of these choosing from the options below. Only one legendary action option can be used at a time. And only at the end of another creature's turn. The dragon regains spent legendary actions at the start of its turn. It's going to do a claw with one of them. The dragon makes one claw attack. Yeah. Psionics costs two actions. This dragon uses Psychic Step or spell casting, And then Emerald Embers costs three actions, which is a fucking cool name. <laughs> yeah, uh, the dragon creates a dancing moat of green flame around a creature it can see within 60 feet of it. Shout out to Chris Perkins. Yeah. The target must <laughs> succeed on a DC 20 dexterity saving throw or take 42 12d6 fire damage. What is that podcast called? Uh, Acquisitions Incorporated. Go watch Acquisitions Incorporated. Yeah. It's really funny. It is very funny. If you want to hear the writers, yeah, and other it's one people. of my favorite. DNA Patrick Rothfuss is a player in it. Yeah, and he's for great. Some of them, right? Yeah. Why are we plugging them? Because <laughs> I said Green Flame. Oh yeah, no, I know. And when they do the live shows and they say Green Flame, yes. the audience responds with, with Green, Green Flame. Flame. Yeah, it's fucking funny. It's it dope. is. It is really cool. And that was it for the uh, for the, the stat block, the ancient emerald dragon stat block. Okay, well, emerald dragons, like most dragons, also have layers, and these layers usually have layer actions and regional effects. I thought you meant like Shrek, like an onion. <laughs> you just peel them. You just peel them away. Um, no, no, like layers that they live in. Yeah. Um, do you want to read them? The layer effects. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> it looks like you have them up, and I don't. Do you want me to read them? 
Like they should be somewhere in that general area. You're looking at the there oh, we go. Yeah, I got reactions. Them. Okay. And uh, regional effects. Should I read about an Emerald Dragon? No, we kind of no, did that already. Yeah, already talked Lair about Lair actions it. on uh, initiative count of 20, losing initiative ties. Important. The dragon can take one of the following lair actions. The dragon can't take the same lair action twice, uh, can't take the same lair action in two rounds in a row. Uh, beguiling whisper, the dragon tele telepathically whispers to one creature within range of the dragon's telepathy. That's 120 feet. The mm -hmm. creature must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or be charmed by the dragon. Charmed is uh, a charmed creature can't attack the charmer or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. The charmer has advantage on any ability check to interact socially with the creature. Mm -hmm. uh, by the dragon until initiative count of 20 on the next round, a creature charmed in this way obeys to the best of its ability any command Ooh. the dragon issues that isn't directly harmful so to the creature. So it's basically domination. It can also distort perceptions. The dragon attempts to alter the perceptions of one creature it can see within its lair. The creature must succeed on a DC 15 intelligence saving throw or take 22 4d10 psychic damage and have disadvantage on saving throws until the start of its next turn. The uh, can vanish. The dragon becomes invisible until initiative count 20 on the next round. When you're invisible, uh, a creature is impossible to see without the aid of magic or special senses. For the purpose of hiding, the creature is heavily obscured. The creature's location can be detected by any noise it makes or any tracks it leaves, which is important. Uh, attack rolls against the creature have disadvantage, and the creature's attack rolls have advantage. Uh, regional effects. The region surrounding the legendary Emerald Dragon's Lair is altered by the dragon's magic, creating one or more of the following effects. Crystal profusion. Ooh. Natural stone. Within six miles of the lair grows plentiful crystal formations and veins of emerald gemstones that was similar to the sapphire dragon i believe yeah so <coughs> so real quick like so being a gem dragon unfortunately one of your effects is something that actually attracts people you don't want to right to your area because it's like dude there's emeralds all throughout these hills we should mine the fuck out of them yes <laughs> and like are you even going to notice as an emerald i'm sure you do as an emerald dragon but do you care because you just keep regening them they, I don't think the emerald dragon. The emerald dragons don't care about the emeralds. They care about people getting who, too close. Is the problem? Yes, yeah. yes, and that like basically is a breadcrumb trail mm -hmm. straight to you. Yeah. Um, fiery sight, uh, fire and lava within six miles of the lair become conduits for the dragon's psionic presence. As an action, the dragon can cast the clairvoyant spell, requiring no spell components and targeting any area of fire or lava in that region. Um, clairvoyance is you create uh, an invisible sensor within range of a location familiar to you or a place you've visited or seen before or in an obvious location that is unfamiliar to you, like behind a door or around a corner, a grove of trees. The sensor remains in place for the duration and it can't be attacked or otherwise interacted with. That, by the way, that duration is 10 minutes and this is a third level spell. When you cast a spell you choose seeing or hearing, you can use the chosen sense through the sensor as if you were in its place. Uh, as an action, you can switch between seeing and hearing, and a creature that can see the sensor, uh, such as a creature benefiting from seeing visibility or true sight, sees a luminous intangible orb about the size of your fist. Uh, so you can, uh, a emerald dragon can basically see throughout their entire fucking realm, as long yeah, as there's lava. as long as there's lava there. Yeah. Um, there's subtle obstruction. Rocks within six miles of the dragon's lair sometimes move of their own accord, usually with no one, it, when no one's watching. So does it move? <laughs> Often the rocks, well it says it does. Often the rocks obstruct the approach of the emerald dragon's lair, with boulders moving to block narrow uh de defiles, right? Is that that word? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, way Way markers tumbling off the path or uh, similar stones shifting beneath travelers' feet to send them tumbling down slopes or into rivers. Prep that feather fall. I mean, his terrain just commits murder sometimes. Yeah, just sometimes. <laughs> because it's too close. Commit murder. <laughs> <laughs> no more path. Thriving wildlife. Giant lizards are attracted to the area within six miles of the lair and settle there in large numbers. Uh, let's take a quick look at giant lizards. They're fairly strong. No, they're not. They're one fourth challenge rating. Well, they got plus two strength. Oh, strong, strong. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nineteen eight. As a monster, it's not very powerful. No. It's twelve. Uh, twelve AC natural armor and nineteen HP. You could probably take it down in like two or three hits. Uh, if the dragon dies, the population of the giant lizards near the lair returns to normal levels over the course of one d ten days. Rocks immediately stop moving of their own accord. That'd be weird if they kept doing it. And the existing of abundance of chris the existing abundance of crystals and emeralds remains, but so new ones form at a normal rate. So, if the giant lizard's population returns to normal levels within a 
10 days max. So we're just, there's a massive die out of lizards, right? They just start fucking dying, killing over uh, for no reason. Yeah, I guess so. Crazy. They just start jumping into the lava. Yeah. One at a time over yeah, one to absolutely. 10 days. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, it's been cool. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm going to get out. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Or like maybe uh maybe a lot of animals in the area like rely on this as a food source. Oh like, my goodness. And it's just like the normal feeding frenzy is going and the lizards aren't keeping up anymore. Yeah. And now it's back to normal and the predators are dissipating over these one to ten days. Interesting. But how do you explain rolling a one on this? You know what they I mean? Just, they just all die. And then the next day they fucking Thanos snap and turn yeah. into dust. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, any questions about the Emerald Dragon? Um, uh, how like it sounds like they're teaming up with other dragons? Fairly Only regular? sapphire dragons, and not very often. Not very often. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, teaming up with adventurers. Uh, only when they have fire giants to deal with, and not very often. Okay, this is cool. This is like a whole setup for a. This could be a whole story arc, pretty yeah. much. Like pretty much any of these dragons is what I'm finding out. So, no, no questions. All right, let's take a long rest. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to The Long Rest. This is the part of the show where we rest forever. Not forever, for a while. Until next week. Yeah. But uh, until then, we've got some information for you. Like, uh, like, hey, I've, oh, let's first say thank you guys so much for watching the show. We really appreciate Indeed, it. Indeed, thank you very much. We're glad that you guys are enjoying uh, the show enough to, to get to this part of the show. You made it to beanbag chairs and drinks and snacks. Indeed. So, like, good job. Well, and how I'm are hungry. the Oz, Oz Devoirs? Um, delicious, and I'm starving. Yeah, uh, deviled <laughs> eggs with bacon and extra pepper, <laughs> just like you asked. Thank you very much. Uh, do you want to support us? And and like, we gotta buy these snacks. So, like, <laughs> can you help? Uh, <laughs> you can go to Patreon.com/slash/DungeonCast to support us. It's the best thing you can do aside from listening and telling people about the show. Um, we we take a lot of time and and resources that we spend on the show. Um, and it, it's cool when you guys give back. So thank you guys so much. Thanks to everybody who, who does it. We shouted out Patreon uh, people last episode. Let us know if you got missed or anything like that. Reach out to us on Patreon and we'll get that handled. Uh, don't forget about like your your like uh, Discord benefits. We have a private channel for Patreon people in there. Um, you also get a ton of other bonus content when you go to Patreon, like early ad-free episodes. Um, there's early as three weeks, two I weeks, love that. one ad week. Free. Ad free shit. And then um, there's live plays in there. As Lots early, of live plays. Yeah, like uh, that we've done, comedy games and stuff. You can check all that stuff out as at early as the $5 tier. Um, we've had some people ask us about like, hey, you guys don't have a $1 tier. We, we did, but we don't like not accept money on there. You know what I mean? So you can you can donate at any level. The bonus content starts at 5 Right. Yeah. So, you, but you can give us a buck. Like, we're super appreciative of whatever you know, whatever you can do. And uh, if you can't do stuff like that, there are other ways to support us too. Like going to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and review us, leaving comments on YouTube, hitting that like and subscribe, smash that shit, smash <laughs> it with your hand. Uh, but like, reviewing the show is is really important and critical for visibility. Um, so positive reviews are, are great. Like five stars, those really help us out. You guys really helped us out with a big milestone recently. What was it? Like a thousand iTunes reviews? Yeah, absolutely. It was crazy yeah. cool to see that. Now let's hit 2,000. I know, right? We're about to hit 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're very excited about that. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. probably going to happen guys. in like a month or two. Yeah, I would say so. So thanks, everyone. Um, those are the types of things that really help to show out. Um, so if you want to see us succeed even harder, like, yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, that would be really, really, really great. Uh, spread that word. Spread it. Tell everyone. Just, just grab both sides of it and jam it wide open. No. Yeah, that's how it works, right? I was thinking more like butter. Yeah, toast. cut it, stab it, slice through it, and then get some on the flat part, and then rub it, like I scrape it onto God. something. Yeah. Onto your friends. Uh, oh that done that TDC butter, baby. Uh, follow us on Discord. Well, is that how that works? Join our Discord uh, and like be a part of the community there. They're really awesome. They're really great. Uh, brace yourselves, mods. The mods are really cool. Um, it's just that when we promote Discord, people tend to go there, and then the mods have more work to do, um, true. which is great. True. You guys are awesome. Uh, check out the Twitter. Check out the Gram, and check out the TikTok, baby. 
we doing shit there. If you want to get involved with the Dungeon Cast community, which is very positive and great, great stuff. Um, everybody there is is a pleasure to speak with. Will and I pop in there. If you're fan, if you're fans of Super Quest Saga, or if you're a fan of this show and you know who your special guest Jake is, you can talk to us in Discord. We're not like there all the time, but you you could ask us questions and shit. And we answer them. Yeah. So whenever we can. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty much it. That's how long it. That's how long it, the rest is. It's how long. Rest it's, over. Well, yeah. Time to call it a game. Call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.